Today I want to quickly talk about command query separation in relation to events. I've done a previous video on command query separation, so if you haven't checked that out, be sure to check that out. But very shortly, command query separation is about separating your methods that perform commands from your methods that perform queries. Any method that mutates state is a command method, and any method that returns a value is a query method. So command query separation asks you to separate these two so that some methods are not both commands and queries. In other words, they are not mutating state and returning values. To really get a quick grasp of what, what it's all about, think about this quote who was formulated by the person who formulated command query separation. Asking a question should not change the answer. But there are some edge cases that make separating commands from queries difficult. One famous example is the pop method on a stack. So if you call pop on a stack, you remove the first element, but you're also returning that first element. So in some sense, you're performing both a command and a query, and then in some sense, you're then asking a question that does change the answer. But let's back up and talk about a simpler scenario. Imagine that you have an instance of a user and you call save on that user, and then imagine that when you call save, that user is then saved to a database or to memory or whatever. Essentially, it mutates some kind of state, but it does so synchronously. So in this hypothetical example, when we call save, yes, the user saves, but also if the user was unable to be saved, you get an error message back. So in other words, imagine then that you want to do two things. You want to save the user, i.e. mutate state, i.e. command, but you also want to know whether the save was successful. You want to return something, i.e. a query. So let's say that that would be returning a boolean, for example. That would be a trivial scenario. If we make the scenario a little bit more complex, then you could say that you, instead of getting back a boolean, you get back a string that contains the error message, right? So it's, it's kind of obvious that, obvious that we're doing two things. We're saving the user, and, but we're also returning some kind of value that describes whether the save of the user was successful or not. So if you think about that, the scenario is actually very, very close to the pop example, the pop on a stack example. It's essentially the same problem. Instead of doing two things, we are doing uh, both of them at the same time. So I found a very interesting Stack Overflow post on, the, on, the, on this particular topic, and I'll link that in the description. Because an obvious way of mitigating this problem is, of course, to mutate the user object with whether the save was successful or not. But that just doesn't really feel right. I can totally relate to that feeling a bit awkward, right? Because then you call save on the user instance and you mutate the, the user instance to contain whether the user was saved or not. So when you then want to make a decision further on, you would have to inspect the state of the user in order to determine whether to try to save again or change some kind of value of the user uh, or whether it actually successfully saved. But to get to the point, essentially, events are another way of trying to mitigate this issue. So just as a parenthesis, of course, there are many, many ways of solving this scenario. And there are many ways of solving this problem that does adhere to command query separation. Events is just one example, but I find it particularly interesting. So let's talk about observer pattern rather than events, because I think that's sort of a more universal way to talk about the same concept. So observer pattern or events essentially sort of invert the control flow. Instead of pulling data, you push data, right? Instead of clients pulling data from a server, the server pushes data to the clients. So observer pattern in a nutshell, remember, observer pattern consists of a subject that can be observed, in other words, an observable, and a bunch of observers that register to the observable uh, and then are notified whenever the observable undergo changes that the observers might be interested in, right? Same thing as events, right? You register an event handler that listens to a particular event so that when an event occurs, you want that particular procedure or method or whatever to be called and executed. So if you think about that, right, that inverts the con control flow in the sense that instead of checking and asking whether you should, whether it's time to perform something, uh, you let the other person, you let the server, you let the other thing determine when it's time to call that particular procedure. And if you sort of in think about what that means, that means that we move from a query to a command. And that's the essence of trying to use events to, uh, to adhere to command query separation. So in the particular scenario we talked about before with the user, this is what we could do. We could move to events and push commands rather than pull data through queries. So if we, before we call user.save, register an 
event handler, or in the case of observers, registers an observer that observes saving of, say, users or hypothetically something more general. But essentially, we register an observer that is interested in knowing whenever something was saved. Or if you think about error handling, that gets notified whenever there was an error trying to save something. So this means that when we call save on the user, we don't actually have to get a value back, right? We just send the command, save this particular user. And if that saving for some reason fails, then that save method can simply dispatch an event that says that there was an error saving this user, right? So instead of returning that back, right? In instead of turning the method into a query, we keep it as a command because it dispatches an event that says there was an error saving this particular user. So it dispatches a new command, right? So it's a chain of commands. So that's why I say it's, it's inverted, right? So instead of calling the method and getting a value back, right? We call the method and then dispatch another event that invokes a method in a place where we can handle the fact that some users are saved and some users are not saved, where we can handle the fact that sometimes we get errors when we're trying to save users. So to sum up, the key lesson is, when you have something that is both a command and a query, and you want to adhere to the command query separation principle, Perhaps what you can do is to dispatch an event rather than to return a value. In other words, removing the query portion from your command query and simply turning it into a pure command that dispatches another command, i.e. dispatches an event that somebody else can listen to and act upon that. And I hope you can see how this can be used to solve the aforementioned pop problem on a stack. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.